I'm sure you'd agree it's always great to learn new secrets on Google My Business. And this video is going to be no exception because we're going to cover some great tips you may not have come across in Google My Business yet. Now, last year, one of my most successful videos was called 13 Google My Business Optimization Tips to Make You Rank Higher. And that was ready for 2020. Well, this one's going to give you 13 more tips for 2021. So welcome to my video. So I'm Zane from Zanet Design, and I work with small businesses and help them to grow on the internet, to grow in authority, to grow their branding, and work with them to perhaps build websites and help them build a strategy that's gonna help their small business grow. So Google My Business is a great way to help them and to optimize it so that they can grow and get local clients and customers phoning them. But sometimes we just need a few ideas, a few tips, a few tricks even to use to make us stand out from the rest. And so for those of you that are following my video and have subscribed, you'll enjoy these 13 tips now that I've got specially for you. So let's jump straight in. Services and attributes have taken on quite a new meaning since uh, COVID's come along. So if I'm doing a search here for a local curry house and this is what's coming up just notice look how much more depth is in this so they haven't got uh, the directions but what they have got is dine-in takeaway no contact delivery you notice that the the ticks really stand out compared to the others how do they get these ticks how can you get these ticks well, this is all to do with attributes let me show you how so if you log into your google my business and you go into the control panel click on info and then come down the page and there you're looking for services you can fill in which is uh, services you offer which are useful but this is the bit you're looking for uh, the attributes so adding attributes like health and safety and so on and depending on the business you have will depend on what attributes you can have so if you're a food shop you might get curbside pickup in-store pickup health and safety mass required uh, great produce safety dividers there's all sorts of things that will be shown when you click on this pencil and then you've then got to choose what's applicable to your business do that and you'll get those green ticks the second thing we're going to look at is the importance of categorizing your photos you notice here you've got photos they're perhaps uh, not just with a map but also you've got an outside view if we click to others you'll see something similar and you notice here it's got a little bit less and it could be that sometimes your logo appears here as well so how do you get more photos here how can you increase that so again head into your Google my business control panel and there when you click on photos you'll see all these different headings the overview shows all the photos by owner shows the photos that you've submitted by customer shows the photos that customers have submitted 360 well I've got a great video on how you can do that but also you can get special cameras in to do a 360 of your property and your business videos are the videos you've uploaded interior or interior shots of your business exterior or exterior shots of around where you live at work is to do with your team and some of the work you've done and then team itself is the team members and then identity is more to do with the cover and the logo now you need all your photos to fit all those categories how do you go about it well let's just go back to a photo so we go to overview what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a photo and I'll show you how you can do that so let's just take a photo of here's a picture of me at work and at the moment if I click on I for information it tells me that I've got no categories to this photo so that's me at work so I'm a team member tick and I'm at work tick so now I've identified two or actually it only goes into one category you notice it ticks the team off so which one's the most appropriate category so I'm going to go with that and then I'll come out of it and that's what you want to do just make sure when you go through your photos that all of them have got at least one category there why because Google then sees you're completing your profile the more complete a profile the more likely it is it's going to be ranked higher by Google so the third thing to do is to make sure your description is well written and that will make a difference and I'll tell you why here we've got uh, a marketing site locally but there's no real description so the keywords aren't really on the page any keywords on a page is going to always have some positive results let me show you how if I go to another uh, marketing company it's local you notice here they do have some keywords on the page but you notice when you do a 
description, it always has a more button. Here's another example. This is my uh, company. And again, I've got this information. And it's worth bearing in mind when you write this information, just bear in mind how to do it. So you click on info in Google My Business. And there you have this pencil here. So this is more at the bottom of the page. And you've got up to 500 characters, I think it is. But the first 250, so this first paragraph, the first half, is actually the bit that gets served up here. So really, only that section there is actually the bit that gets included when you come to writing your description. So make sure that the keywords, the core services, they're in the beginning, and then that will help make sure your description is useful and accurate and attractive to your customers. The next tip is to make insights work for you. So on the left hand side, you've got insights. When you click on there, you get information about the keywords. And this is really useful because it tells you how people found your listing. So for me, majority perhaps typed in Zanet Design and they found my business. But also it tells you more than that. It gives you a bit more of an idea of how you're being discovered and how your branding works, how your photos work, what types of ways in which people contacted you, where they're from, how your photos are ranking compared to others as well. Now, all this information might be slightly overwhelming if you're not used to statistics, but actually the one thing to do is to keep going back to those keywords and keep focusing on those when you're writing things, when you're replying to your reviews, then try and use these keywords. And on top of that, there's also other reports you can do. So if you've got more than one business, then you can go to manage locations here, click the businesses you want to manage. And then there you can again, pull off reports. Uh, you can do spreadsheets on your photos, your phone calls, discovery insights and so on. And then you can monitor and see how they're progressing as, as each of these uh, businesses. And particularly if you've got more than one location, you're going to find that really useful to use those insights and see what you're doing, what efforts you're making and whether your search engine optimization tips are working when it comes to Google My Business. And one of the other tips I've mentioned a few times recently, but this again is a new tip for the year really, is just to make sure that instead of using updates and using updates, which just gives you seven days worth of up-to-date information, try and use events if you can and try and use offers as well. So let me give you an example that when you use an offer, then these offers can go on until the end of say the year. You can you have it expanding over a period of time and also the same with uh, events as well and events on. It gives Gives you an opportunity to show that that information is relevant for longer than just the seven days that updates give you. So when you do an update, it only allows it to be appearing for seven days when it comes to your Google My Business listing. Let me just show you what I mean. So on here, for example, this one was written one day ago, this one three days ago, this one four days ago, this one five days and so on. Now I've, I keep mine regularly updated, which is why I don't use uh, events and uh, offers as often as others do for longer. So events and offers are the way forward if you can't do what's new on a regular basis. Now for the sixth tip, it's just to do with the fact that COVID's brought about more changes. And one of the changes is you can connect in real time with video. So now, as it says, grow your business, reach more customers. So this gives you an opportunity to do some consultancy. And how do you set it up? Well, you just click on the button, set it up. You choose what you're using. So if you use Zoom, if you're familiar with that, or Skype or WebEx, or even Google Meets. And of course, Google Meets being promoted because that's owned by Google. So you click on one of these, you set it up. It literally is just a case of starting a meeting. Meeting. At the moment, it's standalone, so it doesn't actually integrate, but I'm sure this will integrate with bookings as time goes forward. But I think maybe one country may be different to another, but here the integration isn't quite as seamless as I like at this stage. So the seventh tip is the importance of reviews. Reviews are still really important. I wrote this article about how to remove bad reviews, how important it is to make sure that you get a good average, how you get five star reviews, and also the importance of getting your views seen. And reviews aren't just about Google My Business, as these three videos will show and I'll put the link down below. They'll show you that there's more to reviews than just Google My Business because you can also have reviews on Facebook and other social media platforms. And they also impact the way that Google ranks you. So let me just show you one of the things you can do first of all is you can get more reviews by sharing your review form. So when you've got a client, then you can just send them that link. But also you can do it via Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, you can do it via sharing email. So try and get as many reviews as you can by using this. Bear in mind that not only do the reviews appear here, 
but also you get reviews such as Yale.com has given me eight votes as well. And sometimes other things like Facebook will appear here. There you go, I've just typed in Curry House and you notice for eating, Just Eat, Order Takeaway, Quandu, these are again giving reviews. So think in reviews, think about the importance of reviews, try and get them as many as you can, and you'll notice that has a big impact on your Google My Business ranking. So the eighth tip is to just make sure you pick the right categories. How many categories? Not too many. In fact, you just want to make sure that the categories you pick accurately show what your business does. So don't just pick categories for the sake of picking categories. Let me just show you how it works. So if I do a search for say marketing, you notice that if I go down here, you'll notice marketing agency, internet marketing, internet marketing, marketing consultancy. So categories can vary even if you change or even if depending on what you search for as well. So not all categories fit all, but certainly it's been proven that the primary category is the biggest local pack finder or factor. So that's the most important part. You notice additional categories also come in. So this was a study done by Darren Shaw and you'll notice that additional categories are important, but primary categories is the most important. So if you want to know where to find more categories, if you go to zanet.co.uk forward slash GMB and you'll see all the categories there. But the key thing is at the moment is to just keep going into category and checking to see if they've updated the categories in Google My Business because they do update them. And if you can find a more accurate one that represents your business, then choose that one. Don't just choose any one. So here's my ninth tip is, especially if you've been established for a few years, is if you notice that when you do a search, I've done a search here for web designer, uh, you notice here 20 plus years in business. So that's for me, uh, less than a year in business, no reviews, want, less than a year in business, less than a year, less than a year. Most of these got less than a year in business. And one of the reasons is they're not really registering it correctly with Google. Let me just show you. So I've, I've genuinely done 22, 23 years now in business. But uh, if you notice here at the bottom of info, opened in January, 1997. So there you go. So there's 23, maybe coming up to 24 years uh, of business. And that's something that again, Google will check and see that's correct, that see that my website's been around for those number of years as well. And if you include that, so if you just enter that in, then Google seems to take advantage of that and then puts in something like that for 20 plus years, which again, if you're looking at several people to do business with, isn't that going to stand out as being an important part of your business? So make sure, again, most people don't realize this. It's a lovely little tip. Make sure you do that, especially if you've been in business for more than a year. Now the next tip, which again is quite closely related really, is to do with hours. So what are your hours? Now we know that having accurate hours is important. They need to be the same as all the other hours on the internet about your business. So you'll know about nap consistency if you've looked at my other videos. But you notice also you have holiday hours, which are gonna be around for a while, but this is a new one, more hours. So what's more hours? If you click on that, you can do extra things, especially if you're a business that does takeaways, if you're a business that perhaps sells drinks. So COVID again has just encouraged people to have extra facilities with special hours. So it could be that a certain point in the day you're doing a drive through a certain point in the day you're helping elderly ones. Whatever the situation is, whether it's a pickup, a takeaway, a happy hour, giving access to people for business at certain times, you can add these extra additional hours. And of course, if it applies, then do it. If it doesn't apply, then it's not relevant. But a lot of people are forgetting to use this, and this will give them extra business, which is really crucial at this stage. Now, my next tip's all about branding, really, and the importance of including branding. So I've mentioned this before, about having your logo. You notice here it comes up on quite a few occasions, but I use it also on my images. And there's a good reason why I do that. Let me just show you why. The reason is Google recognizes images. It understands text, it understands logos. And this is an example here of how Cloud Vision API is Google showing that it understands everything now that's in an image. It recognizes it. Let me show you how this works. So I've just uh, loaded an image here. It recognizes that there's a laptop there. It recognizes a mobile phone and a computer monitor. That information makes sense. If I'm a web designer, then that makes sense. But not only that, is it recognizing what's in my image, but if I go to labels, it recognizes that a bit more information, that there's a flat panel there, there's a mobile device, and it's getting most of this information correct. And if I go to logos, it's looking at my logo. It doesn't recognize my logo, unfortunately, it thinks it's Univision, 
but that's because it is quite similar. Um, if I click on text, it's picked up Zanet Design. It's picked up about a blog contact on the actual website itself. It's picked up portfolio. In fact, it's amazing the detail it's picked up. And so now I'm telling Google I'm a local website designer. And I'm also telling Google that I'm called Zanet Design. And I'm telling Google that's my logo. And that's gradually going to un help Google understand that this is how my images work. So don't ever upload an image on Google My Business without thinking first, could you add something to the image? So let's just go to images or photos. And you notice if I go through some of my photos, you notice some of them are heavily branded. So when you go through these, you'll notice that some of them are screenshots of the work I do. Some of them are heavily branded with my website, like we saw that on that one there. But you'll also notice even on these ones here, if I click on it in detail, there's the logo. So it knows I like to do with Google My Business. This is all telling Google exactly what it is that I do. So next time you upload some images, make sure your logo's on there and even add some text. And don't be scared of doing so because Google understands what you're doing. And it will then obviously just help it to understand that you're the best fit for someone who's looking for a web designer or someone who's looking for Zanet Design. I want them to find me. I don't want them to find anyone else. So for my 12th tip, have you noticed that sometimes you get this request a quote button, a big, big blue button on certain websites or certain um, knowledge panels? How do you get that? Well, it's really simple. If you go into Google My Business, you click on messages and you just download. So if you've got an iOS or an Android app, download the app. And once you've downloaded it, you just then register it with your business. And then you'll then get all the information come through. So if someone sends you a review, if someone asks you a message, they can then text you, they can ask for a quote. And what this will do, it will just again, give your business an extra boost in ranking because Google sees you're taking this seriously, that you're answering your customers on the go. When you're out and about, you can answer your customers. That most people don't realize that they can set up messaging and they can then handle their business on the go. So before we go on to the last tip, I just wanted to say, make sure you do put your comments and questions down below. Also make sure you do subscribe because then it means you won't miss the next tip. And also the importance of focusing on the right thing. There's a video you do need to follow after this. So I'll put a link to that in a moment. Anyway, let's get to our final tip. My final tip is really get decent citations. So a bit like getting reviews from Facebook, but you also wanna get citations too. And these are kind of, quite simply linked together, aren't they really? So you notice that sometimes you get reviews, Foursquare, Slurpee, uh, Michelin star inspector here. You notice that these restaurants here, book a table, open table, the fork. The thing is, is in every single type of category and every single type of business, different things are of different importance. So what you need to do is go to your country and find out which ones are the main ones that are going to get you a higher ranking and what's going to give you more credit in Google. So for me, I'm gonna click on United Kingdom, but you can click on whichever one's near you. And there I get the top 30 local ways of listing. So Facebook's included in there, Google My Business number one, of course, but all these other ones are going to give Google My Business a boost because Google My Business looks at these and if you've got these as complete as possible, and if you follow the NAP system, name, address, and phone number being consistent, then you'll see an increase in how Google My Business ranks you. So hopefully those 13 tips have been really useful. Now I want to know what tip are you going to use and how are you going to use it? So put it in a comment down below, make sure you subscribe as well, and I look forward to seeing how we can work together in the coming videos.